the heat transfer properties of refrigerant is the key ingredient used in the HVAC industry for cooling. The ability to read a refrigerant pressure enthalpy chart allows you to analyze and understand the thermodynamic properties of a refrigerant at different pressures and temperatures. Being able to read a refrigerant chart allows you to check the health of a refrigerant system. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to read a refrigerant pressure enthalpy chart. 1. Understand the axes. The pressure enthalpy chart typically has the pressure on the y-axis and the enthalpy on the x-axis. The pressure is usually measured in units like PSI, kilopascal, or bar, while the enthalpy is measured in units like BTU per pound, kilojoule per kilogram, or kilocalorie per kilogram. 2. Identify the refrigerant. Determine which specific refrigerant is being represented on the chart. Different refrigerants have their own unique pressure enthalpy charts, so make sure you have the correct one for your refrigerant of interest. 3. Locate the pressure. Find the desired pressure on the y-axis of the chart. Trace a horizontal line from that pressure value until it intersects with the graph. If you want to use gauge pressure then add atmospheric pressure. 4. Determine the temperature. Once the horizontal line intersects the graph, locate the corresponding temperature value on the 100% saturated liquid line, or 100% saturated vapor line. The temperature in between these two saturation lines is constant, and runs horizontally, while outside this bubble area the temperature lines run vertically. This temperature represents the saturation temperature of the refrigerant at the given pressure. The saturation temperature for a refrigerant refers to the temperature at which the refrigerant exists in a state of equilibrium between its liquid and vapor phases at a specific pressure. It represents the temperature at which the refrigerant will undergo a phase change from liquid to vapor, to boil, or from vapor to liquid, to condense. The constant quality line runs vertically within this bubble area indicates the percentage of refrigerant that is in the vapor state. You can see as the constant quality line leaves the saturated liquid line and approaches the saturated vapor line, more and more of the refrigerant is turned into vapor, until it's 100% vapor at the saturated vapor line. 5. Analyze enthalpy. From the intersection point, trace a vertical line downward until it intersects with the enthalpy scale on the x-axis. This gives you the specific enthalpy value for the corresponding pressure and temperature. The constant temperature and pressure line is where the evaporator turns liquid refrigerant into vapor. When it reaches the saturated vapor line, it should be 100% vapor, as this is where it will enter the compressor, which works only with vapor. The compressor will raise the pressure and temperature up to the condensing temperature and pressure. This small section beyond the saturated vapor line is where desuperheating takes place. This runs from the compressor discharge until it intersects the saturated vapor line, and from there it remains at a constant temperature. See our video on desuperheating. Here the condenser line runs from the exit of the compressor until it reaches the expansion valve. In order to reuse the cooling effect of the refrigerant, we'll need to lower its temperature. This is done by lowering the pressure through the expansion device. As refrigerant pressure is related to temperature. As the refrigerant liquid enters the expansion device summit flashes causing the temperature to lower. You can see that at the entrance to the evaporator a certain percentage of the refrigerant has already been evaporated and turned into vapor, approximately 35% in our example. 6. Interpret properties. Using the enthalpy value, you can gather important information about the refrigerant. For example, you can determine the refrigerant state, saturated liquid, saturated vapor, or superheated vapor, and calculate its specific heat capacity or other thermodynamic properties. 7. Additional information. Some pH charts may include additional data points or curves, such as lines of constant entropy or lines representing superheated vapor or subcooled liquid regions. Familiarize yourself with any such features to extract more information from the chart. Remember, reading a pH chart requires understanding of the thermodynamic properties and behavior of refrigerants. It's recommended to consult relevant textbooks, manuals, or guides to gain a deeper understanding of how to interpret and use these charts effectively. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.